the parachain auctions are live and as you can see there's a lot of bidding going on here uh, we still have five days uh, left until the ending period so here you could see actually it's four days and ten hours until the ending period of this uh, auction and it could end at any moment remember it is using the candle auction method so it could just end at any moment and any major bidder could just pop out of nowhere and say okay i'm going to bid for a lower lease for a smaller lease than uh, Corora just to be able to take it if they bid a large enough amount it doesn't have to be as large as the Corora crowd loan has here which is 456,000 KSM it could be less uh, just because remember that uh, Corora want to lease for between 13 and 20 uh, slots here as you can see uh, so let's go back here to the bids and actually what's funny is that Cross Shadow is the only one competing with Corora here it's almost like they're trolling them right you can see uh, 1 KSM is being bid here, 1.2 KSM uh, before that. So with each passing block, you can see different bids here. Uh, you could see these are the bids that Corora has. These are the bids that Cross Shadow has. So yeah, I, I don't I don't know if Cross Shadow are going to manage to bond as the fifth. Perhaps they will. But remember now they've got some more competition here. So aside from Corora, which I do think are going to be the first to win, uh, almost half a million KSM is being going to get locked up here. Uh, we've got Bifrost here, which is coming strong from behind, 13,600. Kala Network, 11,600. So Bifrost is actually doing better than Kala Network. Then uh, Shiden and then Moon River, of course, which is doing very, very well. So yeah, like I said before, Moon River is likely going to be second, followed by Shiden Network, followed by Bifrost, I think, instead of Kala, because remember, at the time when I was doing this video, Bifrost wasn't even in the list. Uh, when, I, when I was uh, mentioning who I think are going to be the five winners. So yeah, perhaps Kala will still take it, right? Don't get me wrong, it could be possible, but it's just seeing Bifrost's community here bidding like crazy, trying to, to ensure that they're going to get that big stack on the crowd loan. That will help, right? For sure, they will help. Uh, so yeah, we are going to have to keep an eye out and remember that even though it, uh, it it's running for another four days and 10 hours here it could end at any moment right it's it's based on a candle auction so whenever whenever the algorithm decides to end it let's say that and then the winner is going to be announced uh, not announced but announced on twitter of course but in the sense of polka.js they're just going to upgrade from a para thread straight to a parachain as you can see here in the para thread section this is where you're going to where you're going to see the upgrade take place uh, it's going to be very likely here i think because in Rokoku testnet that's where we had the upgrade taking place we had the the bidders the auctions and then as soon as they won the auction then they would upgrade to a parat to a parachain directly here and it would actually tell us uh, in this comment section here in this blank space it would actually tell us that it's upgrading to a parachain and the, the number of hours or the number of minutes it takes to do the upgrade so likely because this is the main net this is the live network it's probably going to take longer uh, to do the bonding is not going to be instant but yeah we'll keep an eye out on that and uh, i'm likely going to do a video as soon as we find out who the winner is of course to get back to polka.js but until then there isn't much point to talk about polka.js unless we get some major update or something worth covering so now let's move on to the next topic which is kusama's uh, price here because as you probably know if you've been watching this as well kusama has been doing pretty nasty right ever since we had that bitcoin drop and then even when bitcoin recovered kusama has continued to dump kusama has been on a downtrend here for quite some time this is on the one day chart so you can see in the last four days we were on red uh, the dump actually started four days ago but the major one happened three days ago with this uh, big red candle here as you can see uh, so yeah it had a bit of an attempt to break through here with the auction hype with people uh, buying up ksm for karura for moon river for other assets to be able to bid but uh, yeah it didn't manage to to break up higher and actually uh, there was some fraud with kusama as well because apparently a whale with over 200,000 ksm has unbonded from their uh, staking and uh, they're they're going to dump on the market right so because of that i think they've already started dumping i don't know how much they have sold already i have not followed the wallet but it's just what i was told in my community so i'm gonna go with that uh, i haven't done enough research on that just to find out how much has he has the person dumped or you know how much uh, left does he have and so on so yeah 
um, yeah so as you can see here this uh, all-time high of 625 is going to be pretty hard to break especially with this but if we look at this moving average here the 1990 moving average we are doing quite okay in the sense that we didn't change the trend right the trend is still going upwards we're kind of stabilizing it here but overall we're not doing too bad so it could potentially change i'm not saying it all depends what's going to happen with the death cross but i will talk about that in a moment as well because i want to talk about that in today's video as well it's uh, probably going to be one of the most talked about topics right the death cross because it's coming any day now it could be like tomorrow or i think two days maximum uh, but when it happens it happens uh, so uh, let's talk about the price how, how low could it potentially get so here you could see that we've got some support at 340 area right so where we are now uh, we've got this support here uh, this was previously resistance and it's acting as support now now if we break below it we're in trouble okay, we are in big trouble if we break below it because the next area of support here is this one 334 We've got a little bit of support here, 327, but then the next one after is much lower, 266, which is pretty, pretty nasty. So if we don't hold at 340 and we end up going to 330, we'll be able to hold there for a bit, but then we're going to go even lower. We actually went that low, right? As you can see here, 338. So we actually went quite low, right? We actually almost touched this area, if you think about it, although this area is quite thin support here, so yeah you can't really uh look look how thin it is right you can't really weigh too much on this but then there's a bit more support here on this area but let's just hope we're not going that low because if we are then we're in big trouble for ksm and it would mean that we could be potentially going into the bear market uh, right it would signalize the, the signalize the bear bar market but it depends on bitcoin's price too right because there's just so many things to keep in mind but i mean seeing ksm dump that low it's a, it's a nasty thing to see, right? And I'm not talking about a major week like we had here when there was that sell-off and we had this long week, then we recovered. No, I'm talking about like a slow a slow sell-off here. If we see this slow sell-off that's taking part day by day by day by day, then uh, yeah, we're in big, big trouble for KSM. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope we go back up. Now, if we do go back up, if you are a trader and you're thinking to sell, uh, you've likely done your TA already, but... Uh, I am estimating that because this area here has held strong as resistance as you can see here this was the 530 area you can see that we've tipped it here and we didn't manage to break higher now i am expecting with this dump that this area is going to hold so we're talking about 430 uh, to 460 area anything between 430 to 460 is going to be encountered as resistance and then we're likely going to dump again now this is assuming that we're going to get one more push uh, with whatever bullish news that we may get uh, but we'll have to see we'll have to keep an eye out on the market and see how the death cross is going to do so talking about the death cross let's talk about this article here quickly so bitcoin holders become net buyers for the first time since october as the death cross looms and this is from coindesk this was posted today uh, so let's talk about this article here so now investors with a longer term horizon look to be boosting their bitcoin uh, holdings amid calls for a more profound price drop. Glassnode data shows that Bitcoin hodler net position change, which track, uh, tracks net uh, buying and selling activity of those holding Bitcoins for the last six months or more, has flipped positive for the first time since late October. HODL is crypto slang for hold. Now, it does show that hodlers are buyers here, right? So Delphi Digital said that in its daily market commentary dated June 16th, that the net positions of BTC holders is a strong indicator of how long-term investors are thinking about Bitcoin. But enough about that. Let's talk about the important one. And the important one is, of course, the death cross. So let's scroll down here. Uh, this one. Okay, some chart analysts though are worried the cryptocurrency could see more selling in the short term uh, because the daily plot shows that the 50-day and the 200-day simple moving averages are set to produce a death cross, which is the bearish crossover in the next day or two. So yeah, as you can clearly see in this image here, uh, this is the 50-day moving average crossing below the 200-day moving average and uh, that's gonna call that's gonna call the start of the death cross now when that happens we could potentially see another huge dump here 
and uh, if we do see it then uh, we could maybe see a recovery but if we don't then we're in trouble so let's read the rest of this article here talking about the death cross so according to kraken's research the previous instances of death crosses on the daily chart coincided with either a sell-off in the days that followed or a continued micro downtrend that confirmed a bear market so this is the scary bit here right i mean if if we are going into the bear market it is what it is right it's it's nothing that we can control the only thing that we can do is just uh, watch on the sidelines and uh, hold some usdt some stable tokens if possible uh, and just wait for the sell-off and try to scoop up lower right not financial advice but that's the idea right uh, it's the best you can do right it's the best you can do and uh, if you're caught in crypto if you're only in crypto if you're staking then just keep staking right there's not much that you can do to be honest uh, on staking now and waiting to see if this is going to sell off and then watching it take off without you because this can also happen is another risk right and then you're going to regret that too because you're going to see everyone else making gains you're, not, you're going to be the one that's caught in usdt sitting on the sidelines thinking oh i really thought that that cross was the start of the bear market and it didn't end up being so yeah that that's the thing right you gotta weigh the pros and the cons here and uh, maybe either sit this one through if you don't already hold usdt uh, to see what's going to happen or uh, just hold usdt and just try and see if you can scoop up lower if there will be a major sell-off right so yeah that's that's what i wanted to talk about in today's video as always leave me a comment below telling me what do you think uh, are you worried about this uh, this death cross do you think it's going to signify the start of the bear market let me know what you think i'm curious to get your opinion thank you for watching Bye bye